hello you are welcome to today's tutorial in my previous video we got the opportunity to talk about or discuss antiderivative as an area and from there we were able to solve two or three examples and we also came into conclusion that how do we approximate the area if the rate is also a curve or is curvy? If the rate of change is what? Curvy. For instance, like for functions representing other rates such as the production of a factory or the flow of water in a river or a traffic over a bridge or the spread of disease. Now, this is where we realize that we can use another technique called Riemann summation, of which you can also call it approximation with rectangles. So today we are going to discuss an approximation with rectangles, which is Riemann sum. Riemann sum is a method that allows us to determine the area under curved graphs. As you can see over here, this is a curved graph. We can use these rectangles to approximate the area under this curve, which can be given as y equal to f of x a continuous function over an interval which is or maybe a and then the b Riemann summation can be accomplished with the use of summation notation and therefore we also take a look under that and aside the summation notation you can see the figure over here with an in interval of A to B and it's divided into four sub-intervals one, two, three, four and each way, each also having some weights and then the weights is being calculated by the weight is being calculated by the change in X equal to the B minus A all over N so when you look at the figure here, when you look at the figure here, we can see that the height of the rectangle shown are f of x1, f of x2, f of x3, and f of x4. So the area of the region under the curve is approximately the sum of the areas of the these four rectangles right so these four rectangles as i said the area of this region under the curve is approximated by the sum of the areas of these four rectangles so in this case what can we see about the rectangle so for an area of a rectangle, we can say that area equals length times breadth. So in this case, the length, we replace it by width. And then the breadth, we replace it by what? Height. So that's something that I need to take note of it. So now, our height becomes our f of x1 and then f of x2 and so on as we as we have indicated here and then the length which is our width is also indicated by the change in x as as also indicated over here so as you can see which is what b minus a over n where the n is the number of sub intervals where n is the number of sub-intervals. So we can donate 
this sum with summation notation or sigma notation which uses a greek word so i know you are familiar with this notation which is um for example maybe here i equal to one and then the subdivision is up to four the iteration will be up to four and then f of x so the f of x i and then the change will be what x so this particular one is the area of a one rectangle so if i equal to one we approximate the area of the first rectangle plus it will be a uh, continuous maybe f of x2 change in x f of x3 change in x so we approximate the area of each rectangle here and then at the end of the day we sum them together to get our total area under the curve of which we call Riemann summation or Riemann sum of which we can also pronounce that approximation with rectangles so basically let's look at something here if you want to represent if you want to represent these ones 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 and so forth as summation notation what you can do is that the consecutive or the more the more consecutive term that we are multiplying is always a two consecutive because here the difference is two 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 and therefore if we are writing that as summation notation you can write it as this sigma i give us one up to um how many because we have right now here one two three four five six right so up to six and then the difference is two and then and then you can bring i so the i is equal to one two three four five six so at i equal to one we have the two here at i equal to two we have the four here at i equal to three we have the six here and so forth so that is it you can also um write a summation notation for various terms as well or you can express let, let's do this example express this summation notation i equal to one and then four and here will be three i so you can pause the video and solve it now what you can do is that for this summation of four i equal to one three i is the power i is equal to three power one plus three power two plus three power three plus three power out four and at the end you are going to sum power one is three power two is what nine and so forth and so and so basically at the end of the day you are going to get 120 so this is how things has been so you can also look at this um um let's you can also express 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 this 30 i equal to 1 each of x i change in x without using summation notation so with this what you can do is that you can also do something like this sigma i equal to 1 30 each of x i change in x is equal to h x one change in x plus h x two change in x plus 
dot, 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 up to the 30. Right. So basically, we approximate the area beneath the curve f, y equal to f of x, right? y equal to f of x here, and above the x axis on a, b by using rectangles as I've already explained here. So let us see the graph below. So when you see this graph, when you see this graph, let us see the graph. When you see this graph, you can see that the change in x here is equal to this b minus a, which is this one, a here and then the b here. And then we have overhaul n where n n equal to the number of approximating rectangles number of approximating rectangles approximating rectangles so for case for case n equal to for case n equal to 4 or 5 let's say 5 the area beneath the curve will be approximated by that of the four shaded region over here right here it will be approximated by the four shaded region over here so when approximating with n equal to 5 rectangles or four because here is even four so let me use four instead so four rectangles we will have the area under the curve as area equal to f of what x1 change in x plus f of x2 change in x plus f of x3 change in x plus f of x4 change in x so that is it so let's look at the second figure at all this is the second figure that we have over here so looking at this figure we have how many rectangles one one two three four five six seven eight therefore our n is equal to what eight rectangles rectangles so the area beneath this curve this is the curve right so as i didn't tell you here for this one this was also the curve right this is the curve so now we have eight rectangles so the area beneath the curve is will be approximated by that of the these eight rectangles. So in this case, the end equal to eight, we will have an area of a equal to f of x1 change in x plus f of x2 change in x plus dot 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 up to f of x8 change in x and therefore the sigma notation or the summation notation is i equal to 1 up to the 8 f of what x1 or i changing you know, x so this is something that i need to take note so in general in general case we can say that for n number of for n number of rectangles for n number of rectangles area is equal to this sigma i equal to one up to the number of the rectangles f of what x i and then the change in x where i've already told you that the change in x is equal to the b minus the a 
all over the end where always the b minus a the a and the b are the last coordinate here the last um x values the first and the last x values this will be your b and then the a and then the n will be the number of rectangles so this is all about Riemann sum and in my next video we are going to solve some examples